Today we're going to go through how to calculate a bivariate correlation by hand. Uh, the reason that this is a good thing for you to know is, is actually a twofold um, argument. One, you're going to be expected to know how to do this when you get to your upper level uh, experimental classes such as measurement and measurement lab. But an even more important reason, I believe, is by looking at the actual formulas uh, and going through these steps, um, it's going to give you a deeper understanding of what SPSS is doing when you just click the button um, correlation. Um, it's going to give you a deeper understanding of the mechanics uh, and I think subsequently the logic of these tests um, and understanding from the data what we actually use in order to calculate these, these statistical um, tests. So, to start, remember, uh, with a correlation, what we're really interested in is the relationship between two measured variables. And so for this particular example, we're going to be um, quite general in our, our particular variables. And so what we may have, I'm going to create just a little data table here. Hopefully the focusing will stay the way it is. So let's say we have some measured variable x and some measured variable y. Now I'm just going to create, we're going to have a very condensed data set here, just for illustrative purposes. And I'll just make up some, some data here. Let's say uh, for one value, 5, 3, 4, and 1, and the y value may be 10, I don't know, 7, 6, and let's say 3. Okay. So very basically I've given you a, an easy data set to work with here. And so for each participant in, this, in a study, we're going to have a measure for that participant on x and a measure on y. And so before we get get going into what we're what we're doing um, one thing to have handy is a calculator um, it makes this process a lot easier and if you're like me a cup of coffee will help um, if you're old enough I don't know maybe a couple beers will help this process um, but anyway I, having those things handy especially the calculator not so much the coffee but having those handy will help and I think before we actually start getting into the numbers, the first thing that we should do is look at the formula for calculating Pearson's R. And so when we do this, Pearson's R is equal to the sum of the products divided by the square root, hopefully I'm writing clear enough, the square root of the sum of squares in the x values times the sum of squares in the y value. This is your main formula for calculating Pearson's. Now what we're going to do is break this down so that we understand how to calculate the sum of products, the sum of squares for the x, and the sum of squares for the y. And hopefully it will be fairly straightforward. And so in order to do this, let's go on and talk about breaking down each individual term in the equation. So starting with the sum of products, what we're going to do is we are going to have the sum of x times y minus brackets the sum of x times the sum of y divided by n in our brackets. So in order to calculate the sum of products for our main formula, we are going to plug in values from this, which we will get from the data set. Now, within the denominator and underneath the square root, sum of square for the x, it's pretty straightforward, looks something like this. We're going to do the sum of the x squared minus brackets the sum of the x 
square that divided by little n and by plugging and chugging our values as you'll see that'll give us the sum of squares y or x and for the sum of squares y it's very similar we're just going to use the the y values now instead of the x sum of y squared minus the numerator the sum of the y's squared divided by little n okay so these three specific formulas we're going to obtain those numbers to plug in uh, to these these operations so that we get to the final equation to give us uh, Pearson's R. Now before we do any of this here's how we're going to do this. We're going to actually create some extra columns on here that are going to make this process really easy. So what we know we need we're going to need an x squared column based on the formulas we're going to need a y squared column and importantly we're going to need a product column x times y so if I extend my beautiful chart here basically what we're going to do now is calculate the values that we need so for x squared we're going to take our x values from here and square it and put it here so x squared so 5 is 25 3 is 9 4 squared is 16 1 squared is 1 now we're going to do the same thing for the y column 10 squared is 100 7 squared is 49 6 squared is 36 3 squared is 9 now for this final column we're going to multiply 5 times 10 and get 50 we're going to do that for the x's and the y's across the row 3 times 7 is 21 4 times 6 is 24 1 times 3 is 3 now by doing all of this we have just about everything we need um, for our Pearson correlation um, equation but one thing that you'll notice with all of these formulas you see a lot of sigmas and when you see a lot of sigmas uh, basically you're going to be doing a lot of summation so one important thing to do if we go back up to our data table here we're going to create a sum row right, across here and we're going to basically sum down each column okay. so if we add these up so 5, 3, 13 adding down so adding down in the y 26 here's where your calculator may start coming in handy if we sum down the x squared looking at 51 and if we sum down the y squared 194 and if we sum down the x times y column 98 okay. you can use your calculator to check that math um, now now after we've had our summation columns done now we can go back down to our formulas and basically plug into each and begin to start calculating our Pearson correlation so let's start in the numerator the sum of the products and broken down we we know that we want to plug in to this formula so if we take the values that we have in our data table we need the sum initially of the x times the y well the sum of the x times the y is 98 minus and in brackets we need the sum of the x column which we have here 13 times the sum of the y column which we have here is 26 and little n right here is how many points you have within each column 1 2 3 4 so little n equals 4 that will not change 
So if we go to our calculator now, we want 13 times 26. That gives you 338 divided by 4. So within the bracket, you have a value of 84.5. So 98 right, minus 84.5 is going to give you the sum of the products, which if we do 98, 84.5, SP in your formula equals 13.5. Okay. Now we need to move down to the denominator of our big formula and calculate the sum of squares for the x, which we know we're going to follow through this particular part of the formula. So first we start with the sum of the x squared column. So if we go back up, we have our x squared column. Our sum is 51 minus, in our brackets, you need the sum of the x column in parentheses. We go back up. Here's our x column, here's our sum, so it's 13. You're going to square that and divide by little n, which, as we said, is not going to change. It's going to be 4. And so if we go to our calculators, 13 is 13 is 169. Divide by 4 gives you 42.5. So within our bracket is 42.5. 51 minus 42.25 is going to give you the sum of squares for the x. So 51 minus 42.25 gives you a value of 8.75. So we have now our SP value, which is the numerator of our Pearson correlation equation as 13.5. Our sum of squares x is 8.75. Now we just need the sum of squares for the y. So if we plug in our values, starting with the sum of the y squared column, well we know that. Sum of the y squared column is 194. We're going to subtract within the brackets, starting with the sum of the y column, which if we look at our table, here's our y column, here's the sum, so 26, and we're going to square that and divide by the number of data points, which we know is 4, and then we go back to our calculator. 26 squared is 676, you're going to divide that by 4, that gives you 169 within our bracket. So 194 minus 169. What is that? That's going to give us for the sum of sum of squares for the y 25. Okay. We now have all of the values necessary to actually calculate Pearson's correlation. So if we go back to our formula Okay, and we plug in R equals SP. SP we know is 13.5. Okay, we're going to divide by the square root of the sum of squares X times the sum of squares Y. Well, the sum of squares for the X was 8.75 times the sum of squares for the y was 25. Okay. And so we go to our calculator. Right. And we calculate 8.75 times 25. That's 218.75, and we need the square root of that, which is 14. So we have 13.5 divided by 14.8, and that will give us our Pearson correlation value. 13.5 divided by 14.8 gives you 14.8.
a correlation of 0 0.91. Our R value is 0.91. What this means is that there is a very strong positive relationship between our measured variable X and measured variable Y, such that as, for instance, as X increases in value, Y tends to increase along with it. And that's how you calculate a bivariate correlation.